Hi, I'm Wences Casares, I'm co-CEO of Blink Nation and I am informing Informilo. Thanks, uh, thanks for agreeing to the interview. Um, Wentz, tell us a little bit about Bling Nation and about the, the rollout you have uh, this week. Uh, Bling Nation is a mobile payments company. We enable you to make a payment at the point of sale at the merchant by simply tapping your mobile phone. Instead of having to get out your wallet and getting out a credit card or cash, you simply tap your phone and you have made a payment. We work with banks to do this form of payment, so we enable banks to uh, allow their customers to do mobile payments. This works with a very small RFID tag that attaches to your mobile phone and the tag has the bank branding on it, usually the bank logo on it, and it has a contactless chip inside. That is what we use to make the payment. We just rolled out uh, uh, three weeks ago the, our first bank customer in, in Colorado. Uh, we're very excited with the, with the results. Uh, <clears throat> Okay, and how many customers will be using this service in Colorado, and like, what's the, the plan in terms of rollout across the U.S.? Well, right now we are, we are focused on community banks and credit unions, uh, banks that have an important market share, more than 10 or 20 percent market share in their local community, uh, in a way that most of the merchants or in that community or college town, for example, already know the bank brand and are familiar and trusted, and also in a way that they have a relevant number of consumers. And so they turn transactions that were happening be between parties that were familiar to the bank, their customers and merchants that either bank with them or already know them. We help them turn those transactions from a, from a global network into a very local network. Okay. You've raised uh, $8 million in venture capital so far from yes. Lightspeed. Yes. Um, how, much, how many rounds do you think you'll have to do in order to you know, roll this out nationwide in the U.S.? I think we have some discretion over that. And, and it depends a little bit on how the market and the space evolve. Because if we want to focus exclusively on growth, we would need enormous amounts of capital. And we would have to do several rounds of financing. If we really want to focus on being profitable, we could do it with one more round of financing. And th those are sort of strategic decisions that depend a lot on how the economy does or, or evolves overall, the space in particular, and also ourselves, how, the data that we gather as we deploy new banks. Okay, this is your uh, fourth venture and the second one you've launched in the U.S. Is that correct? Uh, that's correct, but but it's it's yes, but it's the first one that is so. Uh, U.S. centric, if you will. Okay, so can you compare what it's like to start a business um, in the U.S. compared to uh, Latin America, where you've launched two other companies? Yes, I, I imagine that this would be different for different people. Different entrepreneurs probably see different aspects of this. To me, the most striking difference is, I like to say, if this were soccer, if you were playing football, um, the biggest difference is. In Latin America, my priority is making sure they don't uh, score against me. So I'm, at the, I'm the goalkeeper, and I'm playing goalie, and I'm trying... That's 60% of my time, making sure that they don't score against me. There's a lot of friction in everything. Simple things like hiring people, firing people, uh, writing a contract, enforcing a contract, getting a new office. Those things are enormous, very simple things that have enormous friction in Latin America, and unfortunately consume most of your time and become your priority. And 40% of the time, you try to see how you score, how do you add value, how do you grow, how do you uh, are on the offensive instead of defense. And my biggest surprise uh, executing in Silicon Valley has been that I am spent, the first, that my priority by far is creating value. And that's 80% of my time. And yes, there is friction, and they do have to be goalkeeper, but maybe 20% of the time. And that's a quite a, yes, it's more competitive, it's faster, but, but most of the time you are focused on how to create value, and that's a fantastic difference. Okay. But despite the obstacles, you were able to create two successful businesses in Latin America. Yes. So what advice would you give young entrepreneurs that are based uh, there? Um, I don't have uh, I don't have anything very insightful to say other than I think it's very important that you choose something that you are truly passionate about. Don't do it for the money, don't do it for the fame. Choose something that you're truly passionate and that you care about because you're going to be through a lot of ups and a lot more downs. And the only thing that carries you through the downs is that your passion for the cost. It has to feel like a cost. Uh, and, and that's the thing. Almost the first idea you have, it's irrelevant. You're going to change it. I don't know no one who doesn't change the original idea. So you need an excuse. 
about a space that you care, but the thing that you are going to need to succeed is a lot of tenacity and, 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 and passion to carry through the bad moments, and that passion is going to come if, you, if it's about something that you're... you're, 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 you're that, that you feel strongly for, regardless of the money or the thing. Okay, thanks very much. Thank you very much.